in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Great Garment Graphics webinar presented by Transfer Express. My name is Andy Curtis. I am a dealer services team leader here at Transfer Express. I am also the trainer, and it is my pleasure today to bring to you the Custom Transfer Ultimate Beginner's Guide. If you're one of our regular viewers, then welcome back. Uh, if you're one of our newer viewers, though, this webinar is geared towards you. Um, if you're experienced and you're an old pro, then we might not have a heck of a lot of uh, new information for you if you're an old pro. But if you're if you're starting out in this industry, you're just beginning, then today is your day. And today is the day that I am uh, going to work completely for you. So um, if you've been with us before, you know that right off the bat, we like to do a couple poll questions. And today is no different. We're going to start off with two poll questions uh, right as we get started here, just so we know what kind of people we're talking to today. So uh, with me is Jody from Stalls. Hey, Jody. Hi, Andy. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to those attending. Um, so let me launch the first poll question. And that's how long have you had your heat press? This is interesting for us because there are people out there who have decided they're going to do it, they're going to jump off the edge, they're going to buy that heat press, and then it just sort of fizzles from there. So it's it's good for us to know who who is our demographic today, what what type of um, what type of heat press users do we have. So I'm going to give it just another second and close the poll. And let me share the results. Wow. So it looks like about 28% have each have had zero to six months, 28% six to 12 months, 18% one to three years, and then a quarter of our attendees have had their heat press longer than three years. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you're one of those three-year-old pros, then hopefully I still have some interesting, relevant uh, new information for you today. Uh, we got one more poll, Joey, if you'd like to run that one for us. Absolutely. And that one is, what has been your biggest barrier to getting started? If, in fact, you haven't gotten started or... This is an interesting question, actually, because, I, I, not that the other one wasn't, but um, this, is at least, this, this at least is going to tell me who who exactly we're talking to, what 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 point I should talk up a little bit here, because if you've been with us before, you know I'm going to ramble for 45 minutes, so this, this gives us some direction. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. Oh, we have a couple more people voting. Okay, no problem. All right. So it looks like almost half, lack of information at 46%, 43% don't know where to find customers, 35% don't know how to create artwork, and 22% fear. Okay. Well, thank you, Jody, for those polls. Uh, thank you, everybody, for voting. So at least now we have some direction. Well, that's good. Um, we're going to address all of those things today. We're going to talk about all the different bits and pieces. So without any further ado, I know we're all sick of looking at this welcome slide, so let's move on to the next one. It all starts with a heat press. Um, now, I know a lot of you already have heat presses, so we, a lot of you have covered this base already. Uh, what's interesting in our industry, what you discover is, uh, as funny as it sounds, it all starts with a heat press. Um, as funny as it sounds, it's absolutely true. Uh, our business is not like any other business out there. I, I come from, me personally, I come from an entrepreneurial family, and uh, I know that a lot of businesses, there's hulking investments that have to take place. And in our industry, we're sort of different in that all you need to do to get started is to invest in that heat press. That That is the initial investment, and, and there's not a lot of businesses out there that are like that. Um, now, that being said, it all starts with the heat press is a little more complicated than simply just going out and buying any heat press. Your heat press, that machine that you have in your shop or your garage or your basement or wherever you have it, that machine is the cornerstone of your business. That is the thing that's going to get you through. My point in saying this to you is you need to make sure that the press that you've selected, the press that you buy, is a press that's going to carry you through. I always feel bad for our new customer 
customers. When uh, in a conversation, when a new customer calls us up, we eventually will talk about what type of heat press they have. And I always feel bad when I hear an off-brand or a third-party brand, or they say, oh, well, I found this one really cheap on eBay. I always feel bad because that's not the best way to start a business. If, if the machine that you're going to be relying upon that's going to help your business to succeed. If that machine is a third-party machine that has no warranty or you're not sure how old it is or what brand it might even be, that's not the best way to start. So if you have not yet purchased your heat press or you're looking to purchase a new one or if that is still on your plate, make sure that the heat press you go with is the one that will carry your business through. This is the thing that's doing the printing. You can be as charismatic and designer oriented and creative as you want to be. If you have a heat press that's a piece of junk, you're not going to make it very far. So that is one of the first and very most important thing to getting a new press because that can make life difficult for you as well. When that $200 piece of junk gives up the ghost one day in the middle of an order for the local Little League, that puts you in a really cruddy position. That being said, we at Transfer Express here, we have a complete line of various different price points in terms of heat presses. We've got a video library on our website as well as all the different webinars at greatgarmentgraphics.com that help you to decide what heat press is right for you. And gosh forbid, if you are confused by the videos or you can't find the videos, if you want to talk this out with a human being, our trained dealer services staff will take you through every step. There are questions we can ask you about the size of your business and how much you think you're going to use the press, and we can help you judge which press is best for you. And I promise you that we have a press at your price point for your purpose. If you just give us the information, we can get you there. So it truly all starts with the heat press. So that being said, how easy is it really? Well, we're going to launch a quick video here. We're going to head out to our website, and we're going to launch a video, and we're going to watch this video so you get an idea. It's only just a couple minutes here, and my point is, number one, to introduce you to our website, but number two, to show you how easy it is. Sure, okay, buying a heat press and all that, but how easy is it really to press a shirt? If you haven't seen it done or you're not that experienced, this is a question you might have, and I want you to, to see this. Now, uh, the video here is being provided by uh, another webinar presenter that you all might have seen in the recent past. Her name is Megan Byro, one of my partners in crime here at Transfer Express. We'll go ahead and play this here, and hopefully it loads quickly. Okay, so I understand you guys can't hear the video. I apologize. I didn't realize that's what was going on. Um, what I would encourage you all to do, at number one, I apologize. I'm sorry you couldn't hear that. But um, what I would encourage you all to do is come out to TransferExpress.com. And as you're at TransferExpress.com, you'll notice this red bar that runs across the top of the screen here. The uh, button all the way off to the far side says Help and Education. Under Help and Education, you might notice the very bottom link there says educational videos, and that's where this video can be located. Megan will walk you through how to turn on your heat press, how to set your heat press, and the important things. Now, if you do watch her video, what I want everyone to understand first and foremost is that 
instructions come with every order, and it's important that you follow those instructions. Um, the uh, uh, instructions come with every order, as I said, and it's important that you follow those instructions. Make sure to set your press properly. Make sure to follow the instructions in terms of the uh, heat time and temperature, peel hot, peel cold. Um, as you become an old pro, I'm sure those of you who have had your heat press for a long time, I know some of you are out there, I'm sure you could tell us that it gets easier and you get to a point where you don't even need to look at the instructions on a goof proof transfer. But as a new beginner in this industry, it is fundamentally important that you do read instructions and you do follow them because, God forbid, different transfer types function a little differently. And we don't want you to ruin a bunch of shirts or have some sort of application problem uh, based on uh, following the instructions. So that's a really important, a really important thing. Okay. So when you get a chance, pop out to our website and check the video out. Megan's got a couple of videos on here that uh, are geared towards beginners, uh, people who are just breaking into the industry. So if you get a chance, definitely something worth seeing. So we'll pop back to the webinar here and we'll move on to the next slide. Um, the easy way to start, as I said, the, the easy entry in this industry is, is quite impressive. There's no, there's no other things to purchase. It really is just a heat press. And what's interesting is we're one of the only businesses that are in that position. And what I mean is there's no investment until you make a sale. There's no inventory that you have to carry ahead of time. There's no additional equipment you have to carry ahead of time. And a good comparison to this in our industry is actually screen printing. If you wanted to uh, buy your own screen printing equipment and do in-house screen printing, there's a big investment you have to make right off the bat. Screen printing equipment is not cheap. And it's the same thing as buying a heat press. If you buy cruddy equipment, then you're starting yourself off on the wrong foot. So if you do it right, you have a huge investment right off the bat. And you have to inventory, you have to stock shirts. And not just shirts, you have to stock inks and emulsion and screens. And there's all sorts of stuff you have to stock right off the bat. Embroiderers sort of have the same challenge. You have to buy that expensive equipment. You have to stock all the thread, all the different bits and pieces that come with it. There's a lot of things that go into those types of, uh, those types of businesses in our industry. So when you're starting off with a heat press, you don't have to stock those shirts. You wait till you make your first sale, and the customer tells you what kind of shirts they want. And same thing, there's no additional equipment. You don't have to buy inks or threads or this is or that's. Your heat press is all you need to start off. Now, there are additional accessories that you can purchase along the way, but they're by no means necessary. It's not like having to buy ink for a screen printing press, which is obviously quite fundamental. So, uh, so the ease of entry in this industry is what's very interesting about it. It's, it's cool to see that you can start off with just your heat press and get moving right off the bat. So before we really get into things like how to find customers and those types of ins and outs, one of the main questions is, okay, you've got your heat press, what do you do with it? Well, what you do with the heat press is you press custom transfers. Okay, well that's easy to say, but what exactly are custom transfers? What am I supposed to be doing with this heat press? Well. Custom transfers have uh, two different flavors, let's say. The first one we're going to talk about on this slide is screen printed transfers. Screen printed transfers are when a manufacturer takes plastisol ink, prints it onto a special release paper, they partially cure it, and then send it to you, where you press it with your heat press, you finish the curing process, and firmly fasten it to the garment. Now, um, it, Screen printing has its ins and outs, its, its pluses and minuses. For example, screen printing is priced based on the number of colors. So the photograph we're looking at here, the Darien Knights, the young man here, he's wearing a two-color transfer. It's red and white. So if you were to have that two-color transfer printed, you'd have to pay for a two-color transfer, the red screen and the white screen. We do have to have to create a screen for each individual color. So essentially what this means to you is the more colors you have, the more expensive screen print can get. Okay? But screen print is also still that old standby. Screen printing is never going to go away. It's always going to be something that's out the forefront. Screen printing has its definite pluses. 
but there is another route to go. There's another flavor of transfer out there, if you will, called digital transfers. It's a totally different process. Think of it as apples and oranges when you talk about screen print and digital. Digital is when we take full color printing, full color artwork, and we print it onto some sort of heat transfer material. For example, the young man in this photograph, he's got a uh, CAD print on, that's CAD print opaque. What we did is we took his full color artwork and we printed it onto a piece of white film. We then cut that film out, a contour cut, you can see it's been cut around the artwork, and that's what he applies to a shirt. Now, what's really cool about digital transfers is that the number of colors and the detail in your artwork does not affect the cost. You can see his shirt is a heck of a lot more detailed than the Darien Knight shirt we were just looking at a second ago. And that uh, the detail you see in this gentleman's shirt, this McDougal shirt, there's no way you could get this type of detail in screen print, not this level at least, without having to sacrifice some of it. So there's some definite pluses and minuses when it comes to screen print and digital. And as a trainer and a customer service rep here at Transfer Express, I know that the question a lot of you are thinking right this very moment is, well, that's great, but which one do I use when? Well, let's talk about which one to use when. Um, as I said, there's definite pluses in both. Number one, I want everyone to understand that if you have questions in this regard, our dealer services team will walk you through step by step. We'll see what type of artwork you're working with. We'll ask you a couple questions about what you're going to do with it, what your customer wants to do with it, and we'll just outright tell you which type of transfer is best. Because there will be times when one is more desirable over the other. Now, that's not to say you might not have a customer contact you who just outright tells you, I want screen print. Well, that solves your problem right off the bat. But odds are you're not going to have those people walking through your door. So if uh, screen printing, the pluses are it's great for single color orders. Screen print is very practical, very cheap when we're talking single colors. Okay. If you have a multicolor order, they're best for orders that are spot color and either full size or large quantities. Now, if you're not familiar with the terminology, spot color is sort of like a coloring book or a puzzle. Spot color means you're not using gradients and fading per se. Per se. It's just plain, plain pools of ink. So uh, screen print is great for multicolor, spot color orders, and full size or large quantities. The bigger the quantity, the better the price break, and the better the pricing you get. Uh, screen print is also good for cotton, polyester, and 50-50 blends. Okay, those are the primary types of garments that you would use screen printing on. Now, digital is great for process color. That means full color gradients, fading, and shading, and colors changing into each other that's where digital transfers are best because that type of crazy intricate color you can't replicate that with screen print not without sacrificing the detail it's also good for left chest prints um, digital transfers can be incredibly cheap they can be cheaper than screen print if we're talking left chest small quantities screen print we would have to burn a screen and we'd have to use that screen a certain number of times to print your small left chest and eventually it gets a little bit expensive if you call us up and say Andy I need five left chests for screen print well I gotta charge you for that screen and I gotta charge you for only printing five of those to where digital it doesn't uh, it's not a sacrifice in energy or labor to just cut five transfers out of that one piece of film so you can get a very, very cheap price on a small run for left chest size, uh, small prints when it comes to digital. And then the last point here to make is the garment type. There are certain garment types where you need to use digital. Those garment types are nylon, lycra, and spandex. These are garments that you're going to encounter mainly with sports, obviously. Um, every now and then you'll come across maybe a jacket that's not sports oriented that might be nylon, but generally nylon, lycra, and spandex are garments that you're going to start breaking into when you start dealing with customers like different teams, different schools perhaps, or different uh, uh, leagues in your area. 
Okay, so those are words you need to hear uh, when I when we train new customer service reps here at Transfer Express. We train them that not, words like nylon, lycra, and spandex. Those are buzzwords. When you hear those words, it needs to go off in your head. And you need to remember, oh, I got to go digital. Okay. Now, I know we could sit here and talk about this concept, which to use in which situation. We could talk about this for another 10 minutes, but there's other things we are going to discuss in this webinar. If you want a copy of this slide and all the other slides you see today, they will be available at greatgarmentgraphics.com. And I'm sure there's probably questions coming into Jody right now. If I haven't answered your question through the course of the webinar, then I promise you, you will get a personal email from myself and our marketing team afterwards answering your question. Okay, so uh, please feel free to ask them if you're not already. Okay, so let's move on here. I know a lot of people said finding customers. This is the grand question, isn't it? I mean, this is sort of what it comes down to is how in the world do I find people to buy my products? Um, and there are so many answers to this. We're going to talk about just a couple things here during the webinar. Um, and this is another topic we could probably go on for, for uh, 20, 30 minutes by itself. But um, the big three, the big three that you will find the most business from generally are sports, schools, and businesses. Now, by sports, I don't mean like school sports. That's what we would include in that school category there. When I say sports, I mean different little leagues, individual, uh, individual groups, individual sporting leagues that are not related to schools. And there's tons out there. There's recreational leagues. There are uh, elderly leagues. There are young leagues. There are leagues for every size, shape, and flavor of person out there. And they are all over the place. In the Cleveland area alone, there are multiple baseball leagues. And that's just one sport in one city. So. Uh, sports are, are a huge part of the industry, and they're always going to need custom jerseys, custom bags, custom hats, custom this and that. So sports are a real big deal. Schools, too. Uh, in Mentor alone, and I, I can uh, speak for us here in Mentor, Ohio, we have 11 elementary schools, we have two junior highs, and we have one high school. And all those schools need shirts, they need jerseys, they need... Uh, different non-apparel products, maybe uh, banners and stickers and stuff, all things that you can purchase through us. Schools are a huge buyer, and keep in mind when you break into high schools, you then have spirit sales. Uh, Mentor High School has a spirit shop. I know we're not the only ones. A lot of high schools out there have that. Somebody needs to be making those designs for the spirit shop. And then businesses. Uh, I know a lot of us who've been doing this for a while can speak to the time that uh, somebody walks into your shop and hands you a business card and says, here, I need my landscaping business, and here's my card, and I want it to look like this design on my card. So uh, those are the three who you're going to find the most, the most business from. Now, they're not limited to this by any stretch of the imagination. These aren't the only three types of customers you guys are going to find out there. These are just the ones that... Through our experience here at Transfer Express, these are the ones that you're going to find the most of and that you're going to make the most money off of. So then the question becomes, where do you find people like this? How do you get in touch with them? Where do they come from? There's a bunch of different ways. One of the ways we suggest, Facebook. Now, specifically, our Facebook page. Hit our Facebook page, do some looking around, see who's commenting, see where they're from, what area they're in, and do some imitating. Duplicate the same effort. Make uh, an effort to see what other people are doing. Take that idea and apply it to your area. For example, if you see somebody bought, uh, somebody made a comment about buying a whole bunch of blank idea books and handing them out to local schools and they got orders off of it, well, that's perfect. That's a great idea to apply for your area. We sell blank idea books that simply have our artwork in them but don't have our name on them. It's a great marketing tool for you. Slap your name on those with a sticker and then pass them out to the schools. That's a great way to, uh, to uh, draw some business. But the uh, point is our Facebook page has a whole bunch of different hints and tips and tricks from people all over the country. Check out what they're doing and imitate it. That's the uh, best way to start off. Now, there's other ways to do this too. Our blogs and our newsletters. We do our best to share our customers' success with you because, after all, if you, you who are listening to my voice right now, if you're not successful, we're not going to be successful. 
it doesn't pay us for you not to be successful. So we're going to do our best to make sure you're growing your business to the best of your ability. So in our blogs and our newsletters, our marketing department, they are so fantastic about sharing this stuff. Our, our marketing ladies never rest, I swear. They do their best at finding these examples, what people are doing, where they're using our products, how they're selling them, and then we'll share that information with you on the blogs and the newsletters. Okay, for example, uh, in the uh, picture that you're looking at here, this is a picture of one of our blogs. Great idea that uh, has sort of already come and passed, but you can, you can take this build off of it. Um, every, almost every city in the area here in uh, Mentor, this area, we all have 4th of July. That means that somewhere in the city there is a 4th of July committee or a group of people putting together that 4th of July celebration. What goes on during your 4th of July celebration in your area? Do you guys have a committee? Do you have a group who might need shirts? Maybe it's something simple like just buying our transfer extreme, our stock transfers with our patriotic designs. They're super cheap. They're very cost effective. You can buy some uh, also some cost effective uh, maybe 50-50 t-shirts and it's a great way to put together uh, a cheap option for your local 4th of July committee. And that's just one example. Uh, you can take that idea and run with it. But the point to make to all of you is our blogs and newsletters, we always do our best to give you ideas and point you in the direction of here's an opportunity to do some marketing, here's an opportunity to do some selling, and here's how to do it. So uh, continuing with that theme, we do our best to look at what time of year we're at, what, what's going on right now, and how can you benefit from it. So to that effect, on our website and through our newsletters, we have sort of an apparel calendar, if you will, as silly as that sounds, selling ideas for every month. Because let's face it, if you go through a calendar, you can find different things going on month to month that have some sort of... Uh, some sort of thing that you can you can take custom transfers or custom T-shirts and you can you can market that concept. Um, and I think the celebration idea is, is a great one actually. Fourth um, of July just came and went, so it's that's an example for right now. But throughout the whole summer, from uh, the beginning of June to the end of September, heck, even into October, if you're in one of the better parts of the country for that sort of weather, um, you have celebrations going on all the time. They might be uh, graduation parties, they might be picnics, company picnics, parades, different get-togethers. There's all sorts of stuff going on. So uh, the, the idea is to get in on them somehow. How, how can you get in on those celebrations? How can you get it out there? And that's, those are the things to look for, those different celebrations. Church festivals are another good one. Um, get in with the churches. Show the churches what you can do. You can show them our idea book. You can uh, give them samples. Um, churches need shirts on a constant basis. We have customers here at Transfer Express whose businesses are centered around doing church transfers. Um, so that's a fantastic example. Company picnics, too. Companies need shirts this time of year because of their company picnics. Uh, here at Transfer Express, we're no different. We have our company picnic every summer. and. The uh, uh, management here hands out t-shirts to everybody, so um, again, those have to come from somewhere. You can be that supplier. It's just an issue of getting your name into those customers' hands. And another great example, another good place to find work, to find different things, is uh, different newspaper listings, online listings. I know here in Cleveland, we simply have cleveland.com sort of our online newspaper, you go there and you find these different gatherings and events. All these events, these massive uh, um, Cleveland pride things, Cleveland this is uh, the rock and roll festival, this and that, the other thing, these events, somebody needs to make sure it's for them. And these events have a planning committee. It's not hard to find that planning committee and submit your ideas to them. Ask them, can I quote you product? The same thing goes, that same concept goes for sports customers, too. Simply, whatever city, whatever large city is nearby you, find out what recreational leagues are in that area. Then find the coach to that recreational league. Find that person and contact them. Can I quote you? Can I give you a price on my product? Can I show you what I can do? Or simply send them, send them samples. 
So again, um, the internet is your friend, whether it's online or even just a physical newspaper. These are great places to find events, to find things happening. And remember, somebody needs to make these people shirts. If there's an event, that event needs shirts, and you can provide it to them. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and I know that's a lot of general information, and again, we could talk for another 10, 15 minutes about that alone, but um, this is a good starting point for you. Find the events, find the things going on during the summer, and find those people and market to them. Once school starts, that's going to be another opportunity for you. Again, August is crazy here at Transfer Express because it's back to school time. The schools are stocking back up again. There's fall sports going on. Somebody needs to be providing all of those custom garments to the schools. Why not you? And again, it's as easy as buying a blank idea book from us and putting your name on that idea book and handing it to the coach at the school and saying, here, here are all the designs I can put together for you. Or it could be something as simple as shooting them a piece of mail, an introduction, explaining who you are, showing you some pictures, some examples of what you can put together for them. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to get your foot in the door there. It's just a matter of doing so. So let's talk about your first order with us here at Transfer Express. Your first order is obviously a little bit scary, uh, and that's probably one of the biggest questions we get, is how do I do it? How do I go about doing my first order with you? Well, there's a couple different ways to approach this. Number one, there is if your customer has custom art. Okay? If they have already provided you with it, if your customer hands you a disc and says, on this disc is the artwork I want, well, that solves one of your problems. You don't have to come up with a design for that person, so that, that's a good thing. But how do you get it to us? Well, the Internet has become uh, the basic way of sending artwork, and it's funny to say that because that definitely wasn't the case 10 years ago. But uh, today's day and age, we do, uh, we do accept artwork on the Internet. Um, the best way to do it is to hit our website, transferexpress.com, and uh, Actually, you know what? We're going to pop out there real quick. And how about I just show you that? So here's transferexpress.com. Just make sure we're on the home page here. So here's the home page. Here's transferexpress.com. If you have your customer's artwork and you're ready to send it to us, you'll notice there's this big brown button right here at the very top of the screen. Hopefully everyone can see where I'm uh, mousing over here, circling with my mouse. This is the button you want to click on. It says, send us your artwork. You simply click this button, and our process will ask you a couple questions. It'll lead you through step by step. You'll send us your artwork, and then within an hour, or an hour thereabout, you will get a phone call from our staff who will ask you some further questions about whether you want to quote or place an order, and we'll get you taken care of. So if you're sending us custom artwork, this is the location. The brown button at the top of the screen that says, send us your artwork. Um, in addition to that, uh, if you have a customer, let's say, maybe they don't have custom artwork example, exactly, maybe they have an idea. We have uh, plenty of customers that find themselves in that position where a baseball coach says, okay, well, I like your, your sales pitch. I would like to go with you. Um, I don't have artwork, but I have an idea. Well, that's where we come into play. That's where our Easy View Online Designer, that's where our idea book can help you out. We have all these pre-made designs, hundreds, thousands of layouts that are ready to go to be customized by you, to change the text, to change the clip art, to make them into what your customer might want. So get that concept from your customer, and then we can build from there. Now, what I'm going to do here, and I think we have enough time that I can actually pop out and show you all this. Um, if Those of you who are old pros, if you've seen this before, then... Uh, You'll have to bear with us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our Easy View online design tools so you can get an idea of how, how simple this really is. You're here at our main page, transferexpress.com. Your first step is uh, once you've become a dealer with us, you simply log on using your dealer ID and password. I'm going to log in real quick here using our in-house. <laughs> I guess I need to type properly here, huh? Go. Close that pop up. Now, 
Once you've logged in, it's as simple as coming down to this blue button here. I'm going to click View Layouts. This brings up a whole bunch of different categories, and this is where you sit with your customer and discuss what type of design are we talking about. The example that I gave you is a baseball coach walks into your establishment and says, well, I want baseball shirts from you. I like your sales pitch, but I don't have a design. Well, you simply come down here to baseball slash softball. It's right here under sports. We're going to click there, and you'll notice it pops up a whole slew of customizable baseball-oriented designs. Now, there are, as I said, hundreds if not thousands of these designs here on our website. Which one you and your customer choose is totally up to you folks. So we're going to pick something simple here, Compton All-Stars with uh, the text and the ball here. I'm going to click on that layout. And it's, what it's done here is it's loaded the layout. We're going to scroll up a little bit. You see, it's loaded the layout for us. Here's the layout that we've chosen. And now we can take the time to customize that design and show our customer. Let's say the coach sitting with you is the uh, uh, coach for the Mentor, Mentor Cardinals Youth League. So we're going to change Compton to Mentor. You can see down here just a little bit where we have the word Compton. I'm going to highlight that. and I'm going to change that to Mentor. And then I'm going to change All Stars. I'm going to change that to Cardinals. Now, uh, let's say that I don't necessarily want that 12 there. Um, I'm just going to omit that line of text altogether. That 12 that's in the star there, I don't want that. So I'm just going to click the omit box here. Just omit that altogether. You can also take it a step further. You can change the type styles if you so desired. Uh, we're going to skip over that here. You scroll down just a little bit. Here are the pieces of clip art. It would be very simple to scroll through these and change these if you wanted to. The browse button would pop you out to the clip art section of the website where you could choose a different piece of clip art. Or if you already know what clip art you want, it's very simple just to type that clip art number in right here in place of which particular clip art we're referencing. Once you've gotten to that point, you're going to scroll back up to the top of your screen where we have our Easy View Preview. You can choose single or multicolor. We're going to choose multicolor here. Your primary color will always be the black areas. So if I'm looking at my, uh, my example here, the primary color would be the black parts, the word Compton, the word All Stars, the black parts of the clip arts. So I'm going to choose to make that red. So primary color red. I'm going to make my secondary color gray. Now the secondary color is all the white areas, the white parts of your clip art. Then apparel color, I'm just going to choose white for my apparel color. Then I'm going to click the Easy View button. We're going to give the computer just a minute. And ta-da, there we have it. Now I, I didn't come up with something ahead of time, so obviously this doesn't look optimal, but you get the idea. So when that customer walks through your door and they're not sure exactly what they want or they've got a rough idea, all you need to do is bust out our website, transferexpress.com. You can show them easy view or simply have one of our idea books, just the physical representation of, that has all of our layouts and clip arts and fonts and all that fun stuff. So when you have that type of customer, it's as simple as just showing them this information. And the funny thing is if they weren't convinced beforehand, when you show them Easy View or you show them the catalog, the idea book, they tend to sell themselves. As silly as that sounds, and I'm not a salesman, I, I hate saying that sort of thing, but it really is true. The idea book, the website, they really do sell themselves when you show your customers these things. I'm going to hop back to the webinar here. And as a side note, our little last bullet point there, many of the layouts have been created by renowned Great Dane Graphics artist, uh, Dane Clement. Now, uh, if you haven't heard of Great Dane Graphics, they are basically they're, they're the, the pinnacle. They're the premier graphic provider, graphic maker for t-shirts in our industry. Dane Clement is known for being on the cutting edge, on top of what's popular. He's a fantastic artist, frankly, and he created uh, this year, helped create many of the layouts you see on TransferExpress.com. So uh, another neat leg up you have over some of your competition. So let's talk about pricing. This is another question we get a lot, uh, and not necessarily pricing what we charge you, 
pricing on how you charge your customer, because frankly, that's not uh, that's not part of an instruction manual. When you when you open a uh, a uh, custom shirt business, you don't get an instruction manual telling you how to do these types of things. So this is another question we get quite often here. People just they're they're not sure where to start. How do you figure out your pricing? Well. The basic formula, and I say basic formula because not everybody follows this formula. This is a starting point for you, and depending on your community and your little niche in the industry, this might need to go up or down just a little bit. But the place for you to start when you're pricing to your customer is you take the cost of the shirt you purchased, you take the cost of one transfer you purchased from us, you add them together, and then you multiply that by two. So, for example, uh, one of the garment providers out there that we uh, that we have uh, dealt with in the past, we do business with, is Broder Brothers. Purchase some 50/50 shirts from Broder Brothers. Let's say they're maybe a dollar fifty per shirt for some 50/50 T-shirts. Then you're doing uh, transfers from us here at Transfer Express. You've ordered a maybe a, a decent number of, of sporting related transfers. The proper price break could end up being somewhere around three bucks a piece. So you take that theoretical three dollars plus a dollar fifty for the shirt. That's four fifty times two is nine dollars. That's your cost for the basic formula. Now those are numbers I've just pulled out of thin air just to give you an example, but that's a good starting place. And again, depending on your little niche in the industry and your neck of the woods, that number might need to go down a little bit or it might need to come up a little bit. But that's a starting place for you. Okay, so those personal adjustments. Here are some things to ask yourself. And as a new business, if uh, those of you who are listening to the sound of my voice, if you're new businesses, these are things for you to consider. The order that you're talking about, the order that you're looking at, is it a sample order? Will they come back for more? If it is a sample order, if they're just getting a couple pieces, they're not ordering everything right off the bat, then you might want to consider lowering that cost a little bit. Is this somebody in your community? Is this maybe a local school? Is this maybe a local uh, cancer walk that's done every year? Is this a member of your community? And do you want to decrease your profit just a little bit as part of the community? This is a way to establish a reputation. This is a way to establish yourself as somebody who's interested in the community and somebody to come to if you're part of the community. Okay. Now that strategy works in some parts of the country better than others, but it's definitely something to think about. And the last bullet point here, are you willing to work for less to get your foot in the door? Now these are three questions I can't answer for you. These are three questions you have to ask yourself and you have to make that decision for your business, especially that last one. Are you willing to work for less to get your foot in the door? Because the big idea here, the big secret is to get that foot in the door and create a loyal customer. Make somebody who's going to be interested in coming back to you. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to create your uh, your own unique brand of customer service and how you treat the people who walk through your door. But are you willing to lower your price a little bit to get your foot in that door? So these are some things to think about. Start with that basic formula that I've mentioned to you, and then you can build from there. All right, folks. Well, uh, if you've listened to my webinar before, you know that 45 minutes is usually a little quick for me. I, I tend to talk a lot, so we finished uh, a little quickly today. Um, I, I have some time to answer some questions, actually. So, Jody, if you're still with us, uh, do we have any questions we can answer? We do have a few questions. Um, cool. The first one was one of our attendees wanted the URL to in order to get the slides once more. Uh, and you, you can take that one, Jody, right? It's uh, greatgarmentgraphics.com. Mm -hmm. And they actually will be available tomorrow. There you have it. Uh, okay. If you have not explored Great Garment Graphics extensively, folks, especially this topic today, new businesses, Great Garment Graphics is the source for industry education um, and free education. My gosh, when do you... When, when do you find free education anywhere in our society these days? But um, free, the free education at Great Garment Graphics is the best place to start, and the slides will be there. 
And, you know, this is a really interesting question, and I guess it's really unique to each business, but one of our attendees, Michael, wanted to know what you think would be a better choice, a vinyl cutter or a cutter printer like the BN20? Oh, Lordy. <laughs> That's a fantastic question. I know. Um, gosh, you know, and, and here's the crazy thing to that is, you, Jody pretty much pegged it, it, it's individual to your business. It, it, what it comes down to, the thing you need to purchase when you're considering any equipment, whether it be embroidery equipment or printer cutters or cutters in general, what you need to ask yourself is, what are people asking from me? What are the things that people are walking into your shop and asking for? That's how you base what you need to be doing. Now, that's that's my input, and I know that uh, different printer cover salesmen are going to have a different viewpoint on that one, but my advice to you is to consider what people are asking you for. That's what you need to be looking into. Okay, and then can you print mouse pads? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Actually, yes. Um, mouse pads are a great giveaway item, actually. You can find um, suppliers of mouse pads all over the Internet for decent prices, too, just plain white or plain black mouse pads. Um, make sure that the surface of the mouse pad is uh, cotton, polyester, or some sort of blend of the two. Make sure you don't have some kind of crazy new age nylon mouse pad or anything like that before you start doing your printing. But what you do is you buy, let's say, 20 mouse pads. Then you purchase some inexpensive either digital or screen print transfers with maybe your business name or some sort of festival event and put your business at the bottom of that mouse pad. And it is the perfect giveaway to get your foot in the door with people. So good question. Yeah, and there, yes, there's actually a couple. How much are the idea books okay. to hand out? The idea books. Um, the idea books, depending on what exactly, which one you're looking for, there are the uh, professional grade spiral, or not spiral bound, I'm sorry, binder uh, bound idea books that are full color, heavy stock paper. Those are $15. Those aren't the ones that you want to hand out, though. Um, there are collections of idea books, the blank ones that I mentioned to you. They're sold in packs of 10, 25, 50, and 100. And the price is dependent upon which pack you get. Um, they are um, upwards of uh, $15, I believe, for a pack of 10. I know the 25 pack is around $30, $30, give or take-ish. So um, they are very cost effective. It's a buck and some change per book if you want to break it down. And uh, again, the idea is you take those blank idea books, and then uh, since they're not, they don't say Transfer Express or anything, you need to put some sort of identification on there. If you just hand that blank book to somebody, that's not going to help. So make sure to stick your business card in there or get a sticker. Get a, get a sticker with your company name on it. Slap that on the front of it. But uh, those are another fantastic way to start. And, you know, this is a really good question. Quite a few attendees are asking about how do heat transfers hold up versus digital printing as far as lasting on the garment. Ah, the coup de grace. That's, that's one of the <laughs> questions. That's, and that's a good one. Um, you know, what's funny about that is when I started in this industry 10 years ago, it was a whole different story. Transfers, the word transfer made people twitch because transfers had a connotation that was not good. And I want to assure everybody listening that it has changed. The industry is a lot different. Transfers are not those plastic things that are going to peel off out of the dryer. Um, in terms of how they last, transfers will last the life of a garment. Now, between screen print and digital, they do have different, uh, different lifetimes. Screen print transfers will eventually crack. That's the nature of the beast. They will do it eventually. The best screen print does eventually crack. The way to prevent it is to make sure your customer is laundering them properly, make sure they don't bleach, make sure they don't do anything crazy. The digital transfers, though, digital transfers last a long time. They don't fade. They don't crack. So uh, definitely things to keep in mind. But the, the most important thing is transfers are not that, uh, they're not those plastic things from the 70s that they mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the most important thing. And then I think we'll just say there's just one final question that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, can you heat press on 85% poly and 15% elastane, which I think really is probably elastic? What would be a good product for that? 
Uh, my experience is elastane is a type of spandex material, mm -hmm. and it is definitely doable. Um, the the catch with with a question like this is the percentages percentages are important, but they're not the most important thing. The thing to ask yourself is whether or not the garment you're working with is simply tight fitting or if it's actually compression. If it's a compression garment that's meant to squeeze against the skin and be very, very tight, that's where you're going to want to go with a digital product. The CAD Prince Opaque would be the best ones to go with. If it's not something that's compression, if it's something that's maybe a little looser but still close to the skin, we have a screen print product called ElastiPrint, uh, aptly named, that would be the best place to go. And those are the types of things that our reps will help you decide once we see your artwork and we can take you step by step through that type. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, if you're interested, the next Great Garment Graphics webinar is on Tuesday, July 17th, Corel Draw X6, What's New? That should be cool, actually. I, I would find that interesting. Um, the next uh, Transfer Express webinar, though, if you'd like to join me, I will be back with you all on August 9th uh, talking about online tools to help ordering custom printing. We're going to have uh, sort of like website online 101. So uh, I look forward to seeing everybody again and talking to you again sometime soon. Thank you so much, Jody, for being with us today. Thank you so much, Andy. And I uh, will see everybody. Yes. Not a problem. See everybody in August. Have a fantastic rest of your day.